I'm right back at you now. We got a hot one, a hot one that has been heavily requested, heavily requested, and it's been it's circulated throughout these interwebs. But what hasn't circled through these interwebs is the official leaked paperwork from a FOIA request. We're gonna go through it, and it is none other than STLKI, KI, KI, Jakira, Jakira, Jakira Bonds, and I would be remiss if I did not say R.I.P. to KI, STLKI, and rest in peace to Jakira Bonds. So if you have not done so already, hit that subscribe button because we're going to go through this thing. We're going to try to get all of this done in one big whop. And as you can see, this is a whopping 351 pages. So I'm going to do my best to, to narrate this as best as possible for you guys. So hit the subscribe button, thumb up the video. Thank you for subscribing if you've done so already. Buckle up, here we go. Today we got none other than STL Kyra, Jakira Bonds, um, you know, uh, world renowned i mean she's famous she's had uh documentaries um a and e documentaries about her endless 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 youtube videos about um this individual um and, and good bad and different just it's all their content and then and representation of her name so we're gonna you know i always aim we're gonna big up these people and honor their name in peace you know in peace and in power man so rest in peace and power to Jakira Barnes, man. All right, let's jump into this. So we got an original case incident report, and this is a homicide, first degree murder, but also a battery and an aggravated handgun. Now this occurrence location was 6451 South Eberhardt. Uh, it was a residential front and backyard. The current date was April 11th, 2014. Of course, the victim's name is none other than Jakira Barnes, and she was a female black, five foot three, 115 pounds, brown eyes, black hair, braids hairstyle, light complexion, age 17 years old. There's another victim listed below, and uh, it is a male black, five feet eight, 265 pounds, brown eyes, black hair, short hairstyle, dark complexion, 34 years of age. And there's a third, uh, a second victim, third victim, excuse me, third, uh, third victim here. Uh, let me get my coffee really quick. Sorry about that. All right, third victim here, and excuse me for that. Um, just waking up here in the morning. Male, black, five feet eight, 150 pounds, brown eyes, black hair, braids hairstyle, medium complexion, 18 years of age. All right, and then there's a witness here that is a female, black. And we have another witness that is a male black, five feet 10, approximately 50 years old. And looking at some of the injury information for Jakira, um, we have uh, CPD did provide first aid, CFD first aid was given, yes. Injury extent was fatal. The hospital, Northwest Memorial. All right, type gunshot wound handgun, 45 caliber black and color handgun. Um, seems we have another vi uh, for the victims here. C CPD gave first aid. Yes, yes. This injury extent is minor for this victim. Uh, and the same gun was used. This victim went by, uh, Jakira went uh, by ambulance 55. Uh, this victim went by ambulance 36. And this victim, injury extent minor. Uh, it's no uh, ambulance or responding unit listed for him. Suspect number one, they have uh, suspect demographics, uh, male black, five foot five through five foot eight, 130 pounds to 160 pounds, brown eyes, black hair, braids hairstyle, medium complexion, age 16 through 19 years of age. Clothing description, top, gray, dark, gray hoodie, hooded sweatshirt, bottom, blue, blue jeans, hat, black, ski mask. All right, and we're getting down to a narrative here. Responding officers responded to a call of a person shot upon arrival. Responding officers observed the Jakira Barnes lying on the front steps of the above uh, residence who has sustained multiple gunshot wounds to victim's upper body. Responding officers observed redacted lying on inside the residence with one gunshot wound to his right foot. Responding officers notified OEMS 
and requested for ambulances. Responding officers obtained victim's info and spoke to witnesses. Witnesses related to responding officers that unknown offender stepped out of a vehicle, Pontiac Bonneville maroon slash dark colored vehicle parked at the corner of 65th and Eberhardt. Unknown offender approached victims at address, brandished a blue steel semi-automatic handgun and fired multiple shots at victims. Offender then ran back to the vehicle. The vehicle fled eastbound on 65th prior to relocating to the hospital to speak to the with victims reporting officers were notified that bt224 was assigned a person shot that occurred at 64th and eberhardt this victim redacted sustained one gunshot wound to the right knee but fled immediately after the shooting redacted victim was driven to mercy hospital but later transferred to stroger's hospital vince given redacted victim transported by cfd number 36 to st bernard's and is in stable condition Redacted, transported to Stroger's Hospital. Physician Dr. Starr and is in stable condition. Ja'Kyra Barnes, victim, transported to Northwestern Memorial by CFD number 55. Physician Dr. Crandell, pronounced dead at 1740 hours, April 11, 2014. And we have reporting officers. And then next we have in a supplementary report for the aggravated battery. Um, uh, and they have offender, unknown male. Hoodie, black mask, blue jeans. All right, we're going to read this right up by this officer, and it is listed here. Responding officers responded to a call of a person shot, and the victim, uh, re the victim, the above victim redacted was transported to Stroger Hospital by CFD ambulance number 35. Responding officers interviewed above victim at Stroger Hospital, who stated that while at redacted with several other people, a male, one unknown age, LSW hoodie. Black hoodie, black mask, a piece of dreaded hair sticking out of the hoodie, and blue jeans. Approach with a approached sorry about that. Approach with a something black gun stating, yeah, bitch, and fired several shots. Unknown officer fled in the un I mean excuse me, unknown offender, excuse me, fled in unknown direction. It's kinda hard sometimes to make out this handwriting, so bear with me. The above victim further related to reporting officers that unknown citizens, male one, approximately 60 to 65 years of age, who gave the above victim a ride home to redacted from redacted. The above victim is in stable condition at Stroger Hospital. The treating physician is Dr. Starr. The above victim has a gunshot wound, lower right leg, just below the knee. The original case reported generated by beat uh, 0311. All right. And so here, just to recap that, since it was pretty choppy. Um, reporting officers interviewed above victim at a Stroger Hospital who stated that while at redacted with several other people, a male, one unknown age, black hoodie, black mask, a piece of dreaded hair sticking out of the hoodie, and blue jeans, approached with a, I'm still not sure what this word is, black gun stating, yeah, bitch, and fired several shots. Wow, man. All right. And that is a write up by an actual police officer there. And I just wanted to recap that because it was kind of choppy when I read it first. All right. So we'll get down <clears throat> to another document here. And uh, this is a supplementary report uh, for 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 the homicide of uh, Jakira Barnes. Um, and this event, the officers have a handwritten note here. In summary, responding responding office reporting officers were assigned to protect the crime scene at said location. And they list the officers assigned in protecting the crime scene. Multiple shell casings were discovered at the scene, on scene, and it lists some more officers. It says victim number two, and it has their name redacted, but it shows that their age is 34. Victim number three, but their names are redacted, but they're male and their age is 18. All right, and now we have another supplementary report for the battery aggravated with a handgun. In summary, responding officers were dispatched to speak with above victim of gunshot wound to right foot at St. Bernard's Hospital. Victim was in good condition, transported by CFD 36. Victim treated by Dr. Victim related that he may be able to ID offender. All right, and then we get into an actual case supplementary report, which is a method CAU code. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is for the homicide, first degree murder. Um... Yeah, the number of victims are three, number of offenders, one. They submitted April 12th, 2014, 9.03. Of course, victims we know. Um, other victims are redacted, male 34, male 18. 
All right, we know the type of gunshot. We're just gonna scroll through. You know, um, you guys pretty much know how we do. And if you're new, definitely go back and check out uh, most of the videos. Um, as as I'll tend to scroll through a lot of the uh, <clears throat> repetitive information because a lot of times they're in these write ups they have to repeat the, the you know the victim's name and, and so forth over and over and over again. So instead of being repetitive, I'll, I'll usually just scroll through this until we see some new information or what I see is as new information. So just a heads up there. Um, but yeah, we're just looking at some more of the information on the document and feel free to always pause the video if you you know you want to see a little more than I'm, I might be scrolling past. Uh, we have some witnesses, um, female black, male black, approximately 50. Yeah, we, we heard that in the other report. All right, so we're down in an investigation now. And let's get to what we see here. Following results of a canvas conducted following the homicide of Jakira Barnes and the aggravated batteries of redacted. We got a big redaction block and then another page with nothing but redactions. And then <clears throat> on the page after that, we have starting at the text arrived home after shooting, after the shooting, and then redactions after that. And then underneath those redactions, it says was not at home at time of incident. This investigation continues. So what this says to me is they were canvassing the, the area, you know, and they have a bunch of statements probably from people's houses, um, you know, doors that they go door to door and ask people, you know, if they heard anything or did they see anything. Uh, this next document we have is an exceptionally cleared close, other exceptional report, case supplementary report. And now we also have uh, an actual offender this time. Um, and I mean, this is a well-known guy here, King Vaughn, man. So we have a male black 19, um, and his alias is none other than King Vaughn. All right, and we're getting down into it some more. So now we know that there is a suspect, not a witness. I'm so sorry if I said witness. It is an offender, not a, a witness. Sometimes my words get jumbled, but um, no. Yeah, they identified King Vaughn as a suspect in this. All right, and then they list the witnesses, other individuals involved, additional victim injuries. All right, now we're getting down, and as you can see, some more of the linkage to King Vaughn. All right, uh, we have the weather and lighting for the crime is sunny, 68 degrees, and daylight, um, April 11, 2014, at 15. 58 hours, so it's at 12, 13, 14, 15, so that's like 3, 3 o'clock, almost 4, and, alright, yep, victim, we already know, injuries, uh, this we can read, Jakira Barnes, multiple gunshot wounds to face and upper torso, fatal, one gunshot wound to right knee, lodged, one gunshot wound to right foot, lodged, and she was take, taken to Jakara Barnes, transported to Northwestern Hospital by CFD Ambulance Number 55. All right, identified by probably a family member. And we'll just scroll down to some some more information. Uh, actually, it says here, uh, I'll almost scroll past. They have an in custody that has a redaction block, and next to that says release without charging. So somebody was in custody and, and was released. All right. Um, and there's the arresting officers. They have the weapon, uh, unknown semi-automatic handgun. They don't actually have the weapon, but it's what they believe the description of the weapon is. Manner and modem, motive. Offender approached on foot and brandished a handgun and fired numerous rounds, striking three victims slash gang-related. Vehicle used, blue-colored four-door Oldsmobile, which is interesting because they was... Uh, witness reported that it was a maroon Pontiac, I believe, in the original incident report, which is interesting. And they list all the inventory items. They have a, a jewelry watch, um, two cell phones, some clothing, some swabs for DNA, and cartridge casings. They got some video uh, pods, uh, camera angles. Witnesses are all redacted, and we're getting down into an investigation. The reporting detectives were assigned to conduct a homicide investigation whereby three victims were shot at the location of redacted by Sergeant McRovec, 
of this command reporting detectives immediately relocated to the scene located at redacted and observed numerous police vehicles and police personnel at the location numerous citizens were observed at that location sitting on their front porches and standing around the crime scene several vehicles and personnel from the media were also on the scene filming the location reporting the uh, detectives observed yellow and red crime scene tape extending across Everhart Avenue and protecting the crime scene. Everhart Avenue is a one-way residential street with traffic moving northbound. The 6400 block of South Everhart containing multi single and multi-family dwellings in both frame and brick co construction. Several homes at the location were boarded up and vacant. Reporting detectives were greeted by Sergeant Cianella and Sergeant something who related that a blue Oldsmobile vehicle parked facing eastbound at the corner of 65th and Everhart. One subject exited the passenger side of the vehicle and proceeded northbound on Everhart Street. The subject began firing a handgun and approximately redacted at several subjects at that location. Three subjects were struck by a gunfire and transported to hospitals. The gunman then proceeded southbound and entered the passenger side of the vehicle which fled eastbound on 65th. Sergeant Cianella also related that a witness redacted observed the shooting and was cooperating. Sergeant Cianella stated that she was concerned for her safety and did not want investigators coming directly to her residence. Sergeant Cianella provided a telephone number for Redacted. The location of Redacted, a framed single-family residence with wooden front porch, responding detectives observed 13 45 caliber shell casings and two spent rounds recovered at the crime scene, which was documented by the evidence technician at the scene. Several of the wooden stairs contained blood spatter. Reporting detectives entered the residence and entered the vestibule. vestibule. Directly to the south of the vestibule was the entrance to the living room. Reporting detectives entered the living room and observed blood spatter on the living room carpet and one Air Jordan gym and black sock adjacent to the blood spatter and belonging to one of the victims. Reporting detectives learned that the victim, Jakira Barnes, was transported to Northwestern Memorial Hospital with multiple gunshot wounds and was in surgery. The victim, redacted, was transported to St. Bernard Hospital with a gunshot wound to his right foot. The victim, redacted, had one gunshot wound to his right knee and was driven to his residence by an unknown citizen and then transported to Mercy Hospital and then relocated to Stroger Hospital. Reporting detectives proceeded to interview redacted inside of the residence Redacted. Related in essence, but not verbatim, that he walked out of the residence to walk to a vehicle driven by a subject named Redacted. Related that he was getting a, a party invitation for his child. Redacted stated that as he left the residence, he passed a male one subject with a gray hooded jacket. Redacted stated that he observed three subjects walking southbound. As Redacted walked toward the vehicle, he heard approximately a dozen gunshots and ran across the street. Redacted also related that he turned around and observed the same subject he walked past standing over the female victim on the stairs and firing his handgun approximately three to four times. Redacted stated that stated the subject ran to a vehicle which fled eastbound on 65th. Reporting detectives then proceeded to interview Redacted, who was also inside of the residence located at Redacted, related in essence but not verbatim that he was sitting on the front porch of the residence when he observed a male black with dark skin and a thin bill walking toward the residence. Redacted related in that in related and then walked into the house and then heard multiple gunshots. Redacted also related that prior to the shooting, he observed a burgundy vehicle driving past his residence several times with three or four male occupants. E.T. McKetterick arrived on the scene and processed the scene accordingly. Reporting detectives were approached by Beats 4154B, 4154C, who related an unknown subject approached their vehicle and related that the possible subjects who were involved in the shooting were nicknamed Redacted. The unknown subject appeared nervous and did not provide his name. The officers related that the citizen resides on the Redacted on the east side of the street, approximately five houses from the corner. Reporting detectives learned that the victim, Jakira Barnes, succumbed to her injuries and was pronounced at Northwestern Hospital by Dr. Crandell at 1743 hours. Detective Reeve proceeded to St. Bernard Hospital and spoke to Redacted, who agreed to be interviewed. Redacted related in essence, but not verbatim, that he was visiting his friend, Redacted, Redacted related he walked out of his residence onto the front porch. Redacted stated that several younger people were on the porch and he bent over to tie his shoe. Redacted stated that he observed the offender on the sidewalk in front of the house with a firearm in his hand. The offender then began shooting the handgun, striking Redacted in the right foot. Redacted related that he crawled inside the house. 
Detective Jones relocated to Stroger Hospital and proceeded to interview Redacted, who related in essence but not verbatim that he was with Redacted in a subject name Redacted in an unknown heavyset male black. The subjects were getting ready to shoot dice when the offender turned turned the corner on of 65th and Everhart and ran was relocated to Stroger Hospital and proceeded to interview Redacted who related in essence but not verbatim that he was with Redacted and his subject name Redacted and an unknown heavyset black male. The subjects were getting ready to shoot dice when the offender turned the corner of 65th and Everhart and ran northbound yelling, yeah bitch ass niggas, and started shooting a handgun. Redacted related that he ran northbound on Redacted and then eastbound through a gangway. Redacted was struck by gunfire in the right knee. Redacted related that he did not see in which direction the offender fled. Redacted related he received assistance from an older male black subject who drove him to his residence. Redacted related his mother phoned for emergency services and he was transported to the hospital. Sergeant McGovacak related that the 003rd District received a telephone call from a subject who resides on the 6500, on the 6500 of South Eberhardt who identified himself as Redacted, related that Redacted are involved in the homicide. Redacted left a telephone number which was dis disconnected. Detective Gagliardo contacted Redacted telephonically who related in essence but not verbatim that she was visiting her sister who resides at Redacted, stated that while she was in, at the front door, she observed a blue Oldsmobile pull over on 65th Street. A male black subject exited the front passenger seat wearing a gray hoodie and proceeded northbound on Redacted. The subject was trotting and holding his side. Redacted related that there were a group of individuals at Redacted related that she, as she entered the residence, she heard numerous gunshots and turned around and observed people scattering. Redacted related that the gunman ran back southbound and got back into the passenger side of the vehicle. The vehicle spun its tires and fled eastbound at a high rate of speed. On April 12, 2014, reporting detectives relocated to the residence of Redacted is the subject who approached CPD officers on the scene. Redacted did not wish to be interviewed at his residence, but agreed to be interviewed telephonically. Redacted related in essence, but not verbatim, that he did not witness the shooting. Redacted related that two subjects nicknamed Redacted, who have frequented the location of the homicide on several occasions, are possible targets in retaliation for someone they shot. Reporting detectives relocated to the residence of Redacted, mother of the deceased. Redacted related in essence but not verbatim that the, a subject named Redacted was at the scene and witnessed the shooting. Redacted also related that Redacted was also a target of the shooter. Redacted learned that Redacted frequents the area of the homicide. On April 14, 2014, Redacted contacted reporting detectives and related that a subject Redacted is the subject Redacted related that she is attempting to contact witness witnesses to get them to cooperate in the investigation. The point detectives submitted the shell cases recovered from the scene to the Illinois State Crime Lab. On April 18, 2014, reporting detectives learned that pod camera number 1146 was inoperative. Reporting detectives contacted redact, uh, Redacted telephonically. Redacted related in essence but not verbatim that a witness Redacted witnessed the shooting but was afraid to cooperate. Redacted also related that Redacted was currently in Cook County Jail on an unrelated matter. Reporting detectives reviewed the 911 report related to this incident. Reporting detectives learned that Redacted contacted 911 during the incident. Reporting detectives contacted Redacted, who agreed to meet for an interview. Reporting detectives also learned that Redacted victim contacted 911. Redacted related telephonically that he did not see the face of the shooter. Reporting detectives also contacted Redacted 911 caller. Redacted agreed to be interviewed and related in essence, but not verbatim, that she only heard the gunfire. She uh, redacted stated that she also heard a girl screaming that her friend got shot on April 19, 2014. Reporting detectives met with redacted who agreed to be interviewed. Redacted related in essence, but not verbatim that she was walking by herself southbound on redacted as redacted passed the house at redacted. The victims redacted and a subject named redacted came out of the residence and walked down the porch. Redacted stated that all four of them began talking. Redacted related that she observed a subject walking from 65th Street northbound on Redacted, stated that the subject was wearing a white t-shirt, blue jeans, and a hat. Redacted stated the subject held a handgun by his side and she stared at him for a few seconds. Redacted stated that she then ducked down and heard someone state that it was a hit. The, the subject kept saying, fuck it, 
and began shooting as redacted watched the subject redacted observed the subject shooting redacted and then shooting in different directions redacted then observed the subject flee southbound redacted also related that her grandmother redacted was near the scene of the incident Redacted agreed to view a photo spread, and after reviewing the photo spread advisory form and signing the form, Redacted viewed the photo spread. Redacted then positively identified Davon Bennett as the subject she observed shoot and kill Ja'Kyra Barnes and shoot Redacted. <clears throat> Reporting detectives relocated to the residence of Redacted agreed to be interviewed and related in essence but not verbatim that she was on, the, on her per porch when she heard gunfire. Redacted immediately went to her residence. Redacted stated that she did not see any part of shooting, the shooting. On April 24, 2014, Detective Stanick and Detective Potter relocated to the Cook County Department of Corrections in order to interview. Redacted agreed to redacted and related in essence but not verbatim that he was at the location of the homicide. Redacted that he was with redacted Ja'Kyra Barnes and redacted he was shooting dice with redacted and bent over to pick up the dice as redacted up he observed a subject with a black handgun pointing the gun in redacted direction observed the redacted the handgun striking redacted related that redacted fell on top um, redacted and redacted he was shot and kept his eyes closed Redacted related that he only saw the first shot and did not observe in which direction the subject fled. Redacted stated that the subject who shot him is nicknamed King Vaughn and his real name is Dave Vaughn. Excuse me. <clears throat> Redacted agreed to view a photo spread and, and was presented and read and signed the photo spread advisory. Redacted photo spread and tentatively identified Dave Vaughn Bennett. Uh, as a subject, he observed pointing handgun at him and shoot redacted. Also stated that he would need to see Davon Bennett in order, in person, in order to make a uh, poignant, a positive, excuse me, positive identification. On April 25th, uh, 2014, reporting detectives contacted Officer Fernandez of the Chicago Police Department's Fugitive Apprehension Unit and notified him that Davon Bennett has been identified as a subject that shot and killed Ja'Kyra Barnes on April 11th, 2014. On April 29th, 2014, reporting detectives was contacted by Officer Fernandez, who related that Davon Bennett was taken into custody and is being transported to Area Central Detective Division. Uh, Davon Bennett was placed into interview room number eight at 1233 hours, which was ERI activated. At 1300 hours, Davon Bennett was read Miranda warnings from a pre-printed card by Detective Stanick in the presence of Detective Servant. Bennett, Bennett acknowledged his rights and agreed to be interviewed. Bennett related that he knew about the homicide of Ja'Kyra Barnes because he saw it on the news. Bennett related that he was not involved in the homicide and has no knowledge of what had occurred. Bennett related that he does not know the victim and has not seen her before. Bennett stated that he does not go in the area of 65th and Everhart. When confronted with the fact that he was arrested within a short distance of 65th and Everhart, Bennett still continued to deny involvement. Davon Bennett agreed to do a polygraph examination. Bennett was given food to eat and water to drink and was allowed to use the bathroom. Responding detectives contacted the witnesses involved in the case. Redacted refused to cooperate in the investigation. Numerous attempts were made to contact Redacted, and reporting detectives met with family and friends of Redacted. Contacted reporting detectives and stated he would not cop and he would not cooperate. Redacted arrived at Area Central Detective Division and related that he could not identify anyone and did not see the subject's face that shot him. Redacted stated he would not view a lineup and would not speak to Cook County State's Attorney. Redacted immediately left Area Central and in attempts to contact Redacted were met with negative re results. Redacted agreed to cooperate and was transported to Area Central Detectives Crane and Rosh. Redacted agreed to view a lineup and reviewed and signed that lineup advisory form. After viewing the lineup, Redacted was unable to make any identification. Numerous efforts to contact Redacted were unsuccessful. Reporting detectives contacted Redacted, who agreed to relocate to Area Central and cooperate in the investigation. Redacted agreed to view a lineup and reviewed and requisite lineup advisory form. Uh, Redacted viewed the lineup while they were seated in a seated position. Redacted pointed to Bennett and stated that he could possibly be the offender in the homicide, but she was not sure. Redacted stated that the other participants in the lineup 
I can't make that out, not the subjects that she observed. Horny detectives had Bennett step up to the viewing glass, redacted that the subject she is observing has the same height, weight, and body structure along with the same hairstyle, but related that she was not sure if it's the same face that she observed on the shooting of on the shooting offender and that she was across the street during the incident. Redacted was uh, redacted contacted and arrived at Area Central Detective Division. Redacted agreed to redacted viewed and signed the, uh, the requisite requisite lineup advisory form. Redacted the lineup and did not make any identification. Redacted related that Davon was the subject that shot and killed Jakara Barnes and I can't make that out. Confirmed with him that Davon was the shooter. Redacted stated that he would not speak to Cook County state's attorney and left area central detective division all right uh redacted was contacted telephonically and related that she would cooperate in the investigation coleman related she does not have transportation detective serving transported redacted area central detective division redacted agreed to view a lineup reviewed and signed a requisite uh lineup form after viewing the lineup redacted positively identified redacted shoot and kill jakira Bennett and shot uh, redacted. Related, she was positive that Bennett was the subject she observed shooting a handgun on the day of the homicide. ASA Molly Donnelly and ASA Denise Tomasak arrived at Area Central Detective Division. ASA Donnelly and, and Tom, I can't make that out, reviewed all of the facts of the case and proceeded to interview redacted. Essentially the same account of the incident as in the previous interview, but added that a couple of days prior to April 29th, 2014, the subject she identified in the lineup drove up to her in a vehicle and exited the vehicle. The subject stated, BD, y'all know what it y'all know what this shit is. The subject re-entered the vehicle and redacted related that she ran from the subject. ASA Donnelly and ASA Thomasak then proceeded to interview redacted essentially the same account as of the incident as in the previous interview. ASA Donnelly and ASA Thomasak then proceeded to interview redacted essentially the same account of the incident as in the previous interview. On April 30th, uh, 2014, Bennett agreed first agreed to a polygraph exam and then invoked his right to remain silent and stated he would not do the polygraph exam. Detective Servant proceeded to check Davon Bennett while in the interview room and related and, and Bennett related that he wanted to talk regarding the investigation. Detective Servant re-advised Bennett of his rights and Bennett acknowledged. Bennett related that he checked in at his parole office on the day of the homicide and was with his redacted on that day. Reporting detectives contacted the parole office and learned that Bennett checked in at 1431 hours in person at the parole office located at the address listed. Uh, reporting detectives search MapQuest for travel time from uh, Chicago Ridge to the location of the homicide and learn it is approximately a 35 minute travel time. Note time of incident 15 30 hours. Detective Servant contacted Redacted, who related in essence but not verbatim, that on the day of the homicide she was with Bennett and he had spent the previous night with her. She related that she remembers that day because it was a nice day and it was the last day of her, her job. Redacted stated that in the morning, she drove Bennett to parole office and she waited in her vehicle. They then drove to Redacted, where Bennett Redacted to receive his clothes at that location. They then drove to 55th and Wood in Chicago because her kids got out of school at 15.30 hours. Redacted having the type of vehicle used in the homicide. Redacted related she was with Bennett throughout the evening. Reporting detectives learned the travel times from each location and normal traffic on MapQuest and learn that approximately 43 minutes of travel time is needed accordingly according to give to the account given by redacted reported detectives did not take into account any stops in travel did not consider friday afternoon traffic reporting detectives reviewed pod number 40 40 uh, 46 um, at approximate time of the homicide reporting detectives observed a vehicle drive eastbound and then immediately turned southbound the image of the video is of poor quality and the vehicle is not identifiable. On April 30th, 2013, reporting detectives contacted the, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office and informed ASA Denise the facts of the case. ASA Thomas Sack, after reviewing the facts of the case, rejected charges against Davon Bennett at 18.34 hours based on the inconsistencies in the witness's statements. It is in the contention of the, poli of the reporting detectives that this investigation has proven to the satisfaction of the Chicago Police Department that Davon Bennett caused the 
death of Jakara Barnes and the shooting of redacted, shooting Jakara Barnes redacted, further that this case be cleared exceptionally at this time due to the declination to prosecute Davon Bennett by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. And they list all of the officers and detectives. All right, the next document we have is a morgue report, and this is a field investigation morgue report that was submitted April 14th, 2014. And we'll get down into some information. So, so we got a pretty hefty document here. All right, Dr. I don't know how to pronounce that, performed an autopsy on the remains of Jakara Barnes and determined the cause and manner of death to be multiple gunshot wounds slash homicide. And it lists the uh, gunshot wounds here, large caliber uh, bullet. All right, and here we have the actual autopsy of the, um, the gunshot wounds for Jakara Barnes. And as you can see, a lot of um, body body shots entered first one entered uh, there and exited the arm there and then yeah and then this yeah these are pretty deadly shots here and this was you can see they labeled as close contact which is uh, probably consistent with that witness statement that the vic uh, the, the suspect stood over uh, Jakira all right, and the next document is the medical examiner uh, document. Um, it just lists all of, uh, you know, at the time of the, the morgue report. We, we'll breeze through that. It lists her tattoos. Uh, on the right arm, a picture of a leaf is inscribed. On the anterior right forearm, picture of playing cards. On the right posterior forearm, the name Carlson. On the left neck, the word Korean is inscribed. On the left anterior forearm, rest in peace, little B, inscribed. On the right index finger, the letter L is inscribed. On the left index finger, a ineligible letter is inscribed. On the left post posterior forearm, the words cash out is inscribed. Multiple gunshot wounds on the left side of the face seven inches beneath the top of the head, two inches to the left of anterior midline. There's a gunshot wound of entrance, uh, about a, a quarter inch with a circular remote abrasion. The wound involves the skin, subcutaneous tissue in the area penetrates through the inner mouth and exits through the right mandible causing a fracture. The wound exits seven inches below beneath the top of the head, two and a half, two and a quarter inches to the right of the anterior midline, where there is an irregular lacerated gunshot wound of exit, and then it, it lists uh, more of the the bullet damage. And like I said, you guys can always uh, pause this if you guys want to read through that this any of this information, but I'll, I'll breeze through this. And yeah, uh, pathologic diagnosis, multiple gunshot wounds involving the neck, face, upper extremities, chest, and abdomen. One projectile is, is recovered from the left posterior back. Uh, evidence of intermediate range of fire is present on the gunshot on the left neck. Uh, so I believe that's close, the proof that it's close range. Status post-emergency, okay. Um, opinion this 19 year old black female Shakira Barnes died due to multiple gunshot wounds okay and this is a um, crime scene document crime scene processing report excuse me and this is all the evidence that they have at the crime scenes we'll, we'll breeze through this because it, it, I imagine it's pretty hefty but we'll get to a narrative Reporting detectives, uh, reporting technicians was assigned to the above homicide crime scene. The scene was photographed and processed for physical evidence, as noted in the report. The victim was further photographed and printed. All right, and another crime scene. Uh, this is a pickup document for the morgue. Let's go ahead and breeze through that. Some iClear documents where they're uh, registering the evidence into iClear, which is their database 
and this is a sideways document. Let's try to rotate it if we can. Um, not 100% sure. Oh, just some more evidence uh, stuff. Okay. All right, scrolling down past this. So it says this is a hefty document, um, 350 pages. But we're doing pretty good. Um, we're about 100 in. I mean, these is all uh, inventories, evidence uh, documents. Like I said, you guys can pause it and if you want to check out any of these and tilt your head sideways. Um, all right, this next one is an inventory. They're doing more inventory. A lot of a lot of evidence they inventoried in this case. Some more crime scene processing. Some type of photo request they want. Both overall close-up digital photographs. Reporting detected photographed in lineup that was conducted at Area Central Detective Bureau. No identification was made. It has some lineup participants. Um, yeah, this is a photo request again. Involved people. It lists Chicago Barnes. And the rest are redacted. The, detec uh, the reporting detective photographed the two lineups which were conducted at Area Central Detective Bureau. Redacted as positively identified in the second lineup. All right, another document. Um, no identification was made. It's a lineup document, so they're requesting to take photographs of the lineup uh, that they conducted. All right, and this is more uh, evidence submission. We have a lab report for the cartridge cases that were found on the scene. And I guess they were just submitting them. Uh, remarks exhibit 1 through 13 will be forwarded to the firearm section. So they're submitting those bullets for uh, ballistics. Um, okay, it says the following evidence was received by them. One Remington brand, 45 cartridge case to fire cartridge cases in exhibit 1 through 13 were identified as fired in the same firearm so they were able to match up the bullets it seems to the same gun all the bullet casings that were on the shell they are assuming came from the same gun uh, some more uh, evidence deferral documents uh, some IBIS ballistics alright and then we have a one uh, Jakaira sorry for that scroll over all her aliases her, her records which I uh, if you're not familiar I really don't go through any of these uh, previous records you know unless uh, really uh, suggested to or, or it's like requested to you know like all right then I'll try to dig up the arrest report or something like that um, uh, but yeah it seems we have an arrest report for a one Davon Bennett. Um, of course, we know who that is. And also, no, let's, you know, rest in peace to him as well. Uh, we, we, we can do that as well. Um, charges are listed here, which he was charged for, and the victim is listed. First degree murder, aggravated battery, aggravated battery. So shooting, I guess, of the two victims and, and the murder. All right. Scrolling through some more documentation victim and complainant arrest reporting it's just arrest reporting uh, and we get down to a narrative this is an arrest uh, by CPD fugitive apprehension all right Ar arriving officers were advised by a detective that uh, Bennett was identified in a photo array as a person who shot Jakara Barnes redacted on April 11 2014 uh, Jakara Barnes just fired from her wounds arriving officers located uh, Bennett, who was placed into custody and transported to Area Central for processing and investigation. Okay. Some questionnaires, emergency. All right. And we have another uh, criminal history report, and the officer wrote, and this is a criminal history report for a uh, King Vaughn, and the officer wrote suspect on this criminal history report in his handwritten. Um, they have a prisoner transfer uh, submittal transmittal of document that lists King Vaughn. We have some more redacted criminal history. Let's scroll through that. 
We have another criminal history report that is a victim slash witness and everything is redacted, which, which is expected. Uh, some more profile pictures, um, some charges of individuals. So they're just digging up all the history on the individuals involved, the, the victims, suspects, you know, and acquiring all the evidence. And um, as we've seen in, in the previous cases, I mean, it takes a lot of evidence and witness cooperation to convict these people, you know, for these crimes. Excuse me. And there is a, we have a jail interview request. Um, by the Chicago Police Department. Reason for interview is redacted and the inmate's name is redacted. Um, all right. We have a criminal history report for a witness. So they even pull crimi criminal history reports for, for witnesses that give statements. I mean, like I said, this is 300 something pages long and we are almost 200 pages in. And this is just lengthy. I mean, we've been scrolling criminal history report for at least 30 seconds here. Driver's license image retrieval. They receiving some driver's license. Okay, so progress. We have another case supplementary report. We have progress lineup. All right, and we have some victims here. All right, 18 black, uh, medium complexion, and this is for homicide. And we also have Jakar Barnes, all right, and we also have uh, unknown suspect, all right. Let's scroll down. All right, and so they're doing some lineups, persons viewing the lineup when the photo spread is redacted. Um, yeah, persons identified in the lineup spread is redacted. On April 19th, 24th, we have an investigation, excuse me. On April 19th, 2014, a photo lineup was conducted at the uh, police, in a, inside of a police vehicle uh, in furtherance of this investigation. Prior to the lineup, redacted was presented and signed a requ requisite lineup form, uh, photo array advisory form, which was uh, subsequently inventoried under inventory number listed. Upon viewing the lineup, redacted began to cry. Redacted, then pointed to Redacted, she observed shoot and kill Ja'Kyra Barnes and shoot Redacted. Refer to the supplementary report prepared for the particulars of this investigation. All right, the next one we have is a progress lineup document. Let's we'll see if we can get down to an investigation. They're just viewing more lineups. All right. Uh, let's see, upon viewing the lineup, uh, redacted, uh, maybe, I'm not sure if that's identif negatively, uh, identify redacted as a subject, redacted handgun in his direction, and redacted that she, that he needs to see redacted in person in order to redacted positive identification. All right, we have another progress lineup here. Doing more lineups. Let's get down to investigation. A lineup uh, was conducted in furtherance of this investigation of the homicide of the victim. Chicago Barnes and the aggravated batteries with the firearm to the victims uh, redacted. Upon viewing the lineup, uh, redacted was presented. All uh, right. Upon viewing the lineup, redacted positively identified redacted as a subject she observed shoot and kill Chicago Barnes. Prior to viewing the lineup, she was presented the form. This is, I guess, two people. Upon viewing the lineup, Redacted related that the participants, other than Redacted, were definitely not the subjects she observed. Redacted, the homicide reporting detective had Redacted, then step up to the viewing glass. Redacted, Bennett had the same body structure, height, and weight, and the same H. Redacted, that she believed the offender she observed had a lighter skin tone and could not positive, positively identify anyone. Right, and we have another progress lineup form where they're trying to get somebody to identify um, someone concretely. Uh, prior to uh, further homicide, the victim prior to viewing the lineup presented. 
unable to make any identification. So they're not able to make any identifications via these these progress lineups, um, which I assume is what the uh, ASA is looking for and why they're they're continuously conducting these things um, to so they can get their conviction. But as you can see here, none, a lot of these people aren't making any any identifications. And they're steady uh, signing these forms, you know, getting these forms signed. You know, it's a lot of documentation for these officers that, that goes into this. Uh, we're getting some redaction blocks, and um, these are some of the individuals on the lineup spread that they had. All right. And some more, and they list the names and, and redact those out. And then they have a lineup sheet and the participants are redacted. You have another lineup sheet, persons viewing redacted and participants is, are redacted. Go back up. Wor words say clothing worn, wearing hats. All right, now we have some homicide reports that are handwritten. I'll try my best to make out some of these, uh, some of this. Um, seems to be Blue something, male one dreads, let out of passenger side, shots multiple times, runs back to car, goes eastbound. All right, and then they have Jakara Barnes, and um, not sure what that says in the redaction block. Then on the next document, we have saw male one subject walk past with gray hoodie, three something walking together. Walking to car, about a dozen gunshots ran across the street. Victim came into the house and reviewed location, saw shooting other over. Is that over victim shooting three or four times? Sitting on porch, uh, then build dark skin. Okay, so they're getting some identifications uh, from some of the canvases. Was visiting a friend. Redacted Eberhardt was inside. Possibly redacted Eberhardt walked outside on the front porch. Several younger kids on the same porch hanging out. Bent over to tie shoe sees. I don't know what this is. On sidewalk in front of same house. Starts firing handgun at them. Williams hit and foot. Crawled in house. Police show up. All right. Then we have. Excuse me. Uh, male one, 18 to 25, five foot three to 5'7", 130 to 160, medium complexion. Shot one, right foot. Lodged, maybe. Um, I can't really make out any of that. Seems to be male 123, something hair. Um, ambulance took him to Mercy Hospital where he was transferred to Stroger. Fender was wearing a gray hoodie. Not sure about the pants. All right, we have another document. Was with Jakara Barnes, redacted, and an unknown heavyset male. And sorry if you heard uh, my thermos uh, heater cut on. Uh, my heat just clicked on. They were about to shoot dice. A fender came running from around the corner of 65th Street. Uh, a fender was running northbound on east side of Eberhardt, yelling, Yeah! bitch ass niggas and started shooting redacted shot in right knee redacted northbound on Eberhardt for a couple of houses and then eastbound through a gangway did not see where offender fled redacted got ride from redacted and from the neighborhood where his mother called 911 Dr. got a ride from, okay, just had to make sure I understand that. All right, and uh, possible offender, uh, looks to be Davon slash Black. Um, not sure. Info from officer, maybe. All right, at Stroger Hospital, so this must be a statement from the hospital. They have completely redacted. Then we have another uh, document here, handwritten. Spoke redacted by phone, redacted had just parked her car and was going to visit redacted. 
the door and goes i can't really make all that out a male one approximately 19 5 10 thin build possible braids wearing gray hoodie exit the front passenger side redacted northbound on eberhardt offender is trotting and holding his side redacted states there is a group of people at 6451 south eberhardt redacted the residents she hears numerous gunshots and turns around and sees people scattering sees the shooter run back southbound and get back into the passenger side of the blue auto the car spins its tires and drives eastbound at a high rate of speed all right and we have blue blue olds parks at 65th everhart male one was passenger car goes eastbound um b311 paper i'm not sure what that says single family homes and two flats yellow tape okay they're just oh it identifying the like a canvas of the scene and uh white frame building and, and just i guess uh, uh, identifying um the environment where the, the shooting took place and here we have a a drawing of the um event by the officers it says blood on front something car room carpet with male victims shoe and sock black air jordan shoe all right and then we have offenders vehicle and i guess this is eastbound and so i guess this is where they were you know the homicides took place and then northbound okay so we got a little recap of the scene there um, seems we have another one here and there's one spent on something found in five casings okay so they're just uh, showing where they discovered shell casings next document uh, is nothing on it in redactions uh, single something gray stone brick I guess that's one of the buildings the houses they're identifying this looks like um, officers handwriting. Uh, this is a handwritten report as well. It says black, and, and I think this is Dave Vaughn in, in parentheses. Um, yep, and then it says white side siding porch. Yeah, 40s, 50 heavy set. Okay. Going down to the next document drop V off about hour before shooting not witness and then redacted we have a big redaction block on the next document and another big redaction block on that and another document document after that is a canvas that is redacted and then they have another canvas that is redacted per victim's mother and then there's redaction uh, uh, troy transported vic uh, threatened victim on twitter on twitter ot roy threatened victim on Twitter her I'm not sure what this is BD photo victims remains that's interesting there view the video pod camera is programmed on a set rotation at 33 at 333 59 a vehicle is seen in the distance going eastbound on 65th and the immediate and then immediately turns southbound this is around the time of the shooting cannot make out a description of the vehicle so they must have had a bad camera you know i mean this was back in 2014 and you know technology wasn't as good as it is in, in uh, today in 2024 related did not witness shooting states davon and black sat stay on block believe they were targets states this is possibly retaliation for Davon and black shooting someone else relocate to residents of redacted relocated redacted witness shooting uh, can't make that out also something can't make that out cousin maybe Redacted, redacted, heard that Dave Vaughn is shooter. I mean, a lot of people were, were, were giving up King Vaughn's name in this. 
You have some more pod camera angles and op and operative. Uh, some more redactions. Did not see him. His face. This is a victim. Redacted. Redacted. Heard shots in house. Heard girl maybe screaming. Her friend got shot. Next document we have uh, is some redaction. Barnes comes from 65th, looks and sees offender with white t-shirt, blue something, wearing hat, has gun by his side and hand. Witness states something offender for a few seconds to not sure ducks down someone says it's a hit offender keeps saying fuck it and begins shooting witness watching offender begins shooting barnes and something shooting in different directions offender flees so it seems the offender kept saying fuck it as he was about to to shoot so probably maybe trying to talk himself up Potentially. Um, photo spread here. No, nothing there. Then a big redaction block on the next document. Redaction block on the next document. Shooting dice with redacted. Out over to something dice. Ooh, this is really ineligible. And then a photo. Did not see direction of something. Flight, I think. All right, nothing on that document. Um, bring Bennett, uh, on the next document we have, bring Bennett from lockup to interview room number eight. Request polygram, Bennett invoice, right, in, rights to remain silent, invokes, sorry. Invokes right to remain silent and refuses polygraph. Cancel polygraph, reinitiate says with a person that day, maybe Ashley. Um, at parole office. All right, AS, these are ASAs. ASA interview redacted. Same. Meet added a couple of days ago. Same offender. Davon. Something. Car got out and stated. BD, you know what this is. You know what. You. You know, you all know what this is. Okay, you all know what this shit is. That's what he said. Lot got back in the car and drove off. So he he pulled up on her and stated, "BD, y'all know what this shit is." And I guess they, I think she stated she ran. All right. In the next uh, document, we have ASA Pat notified contact witness, and then the lineup. Warren came up to redaction, big redaction blocks on the next documents, room number eight. I guess it's the interview for um, King Vaughn. It's redacted completely. And now we have just some event queries of what they were doing. Um, just documenting all of the... Um, entries they were making and I guess all the movements and stuff that, that, that was going on and pretty much any event uh, aligning to the document um, the case so yeah I think we can scroll past this stuff here alright and this is oh, okay no these are callers call logs actually some of these are Wireless call, person shot in the head, male victim trying to get the exact address, unable to get it. So these are people that call the uh, marks. Let's go back up some. Five possible shooter emergency. Okay, these are, are witness statements. Retaliation most likely will be around 63rd at Parkway. Wow. One gunshot room in the stomach, serious condition. Stomach, got shot on the right foot. Witness frequent parkway gardens. 
One of the victims is a member of Jaro City GDs in conflict with the BDs in Parkway and MC 800. Wow. Sisters of College and Trap City GDs. Wow. And Crime Scene. Caller, at that. Several shots fired on the corner, so just the 911 calls. Male shot in front, FAOW and FA, NFI. Two people were shot. CS, sister been shot. Caller yelling, screaming. Hard to understand her. Details to follow. An anonymous CS, a person shot at this location. Person shot on the street. Caller heard four shots, police just pulled up. Heard six shots fired, 64th or 65th. Shots fired from a male black, dreads, blue hoodie, five foot 10, thin build, passenger in a blue Ford or possible Oldsmobile fled eastbound. Oh, this was a pretty descriptive caller. Caller states three people are shot outside. States they are still shooting. Wow, they were, wow. Unknown who shot them. Male shot in front. And they're shot, walked northbound, got an SUV. It's probably why they had so many conflicting uh, issues, you know, getting that, the, the charge to stick with these conflicting descriptions of the vehicles uh, shots heard male black and some more identification allegedly a silver Mercedes Benz with rear tinted windows northbound which is another um, you know a different description of a vehicle that um, was uh, described shooter emerged from a gangway fled an unknown direction shell casings Yep, this is some more inquiry events. All right, scroll down. One street. All right, nothing to note of here. Um, request for EMS. 18-year-old male who was shot in his knee. Happened on street, not on scene. Says he got shot at 64th and Everhart. Going to Mercy, now going to Stroger. Carlos states he saw the tail end of the sh of a shooting. After shooting, he saw a dark blue sedan, four door older model Buick with saber of Chevy that fled eastbound, and a male black 5'10, approximately 20 years of age, short hair, dark t shirt, and jeans jump in the car. Which is another conflicting report, um, as one of the witnesses stated, the individual had uh, braids and dreads, or dreads. All right, this is another 911 caller they got information for. Caller states three people are shot outside. States they are still shooting. Male shot in front. All right. Got a lot of calls. Um, as you can see here, they have another dreads. Now black down. Yep, we read that up above. Crime scene cars. Victim states male that shot him was young, twenties with short dreads. Alright, was shot in his knee. Happened on street, not on scene. Says he got shot dead there at 64th and Everhart. All right. Scrolling down. We got a, all right. After that document, we have some more documents that are redacted, redacted. Bunch of redacted documents. Scrolling past, 
Then we have the OEMC, which is the Office of Emergency Management and Communication. So I guess for all of those 911 reports, they had to file these documents, those documents up top. And we have a clear photo. And man, we're down at the bottom of this one. Wow. And you can see all the redacted pages. I mean, this was a big one, man. And I learned, man, I tell you, I learned something that I didn't know. I hope you guys did. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I wanted to get the full one out to you guys. And it's a whole 300 something pages. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Definitely comment, subscribe, and like the video. And turn your notifications on because I will be dropping another video today. Thanks. Peace.